Last time on the Strings of Fate podcast. Looking at the rooftop of an adjacent building, you can see that there is a figure there. And with the 20, all you can really make out is that on their face, there is this decorated porcelain mask. All right, then you want my training, right? Yeah. How about this? A little test. You bring whoever that is back to me alive. You see that there is like a fiery orange tint to the skin. The hair is like hidden underneath the hood, but you can see it starting to poke out almost kind of like a slight wildfire. Why'd you come after me? But I didn't know it was you. Uh, do, uh, How was I supposed to know it was you? So you're saying this is a coincidence? Oh, sorry, Anna. Th- this is James. Thought I could pull something off on my own, and I got caught. I didn't know who would be involved, and I didn't realize it would be something like the people I work for now. I'm going to take you to see everyone, but I really have to reiterate that this is not your problem and you should not get involved with these people. They, they're they cutthroat. Welcome to uh, the HQ of the Riders of Fate. Esme, I can explain. This is not about what happened between us. Don't get involved with this. It's dangerous. And it's like, not, that's never stopped me before. It's not your problem. James is cut off. As you hear a shattering noise. As you hear the splintering of wood just <laughs> from the boards. As seven magic missiles <laughs> hit. I guess you're in this with us. see a boarded window splintered inward by magical force. On the ground of an abandoned house, a mousy girl quickly crawls her way over to her wounded companion. In Ladara, you are stood for a moment in shock at the situation unfolding before you, until Esme's hand finds yours and pulls you to the ground. In the corner, your Air Genasi companion readies his staff for what may come. But the first direction given to you comes from Esme as she shouts, Cover your face! Quickly! She immediately ducks and puts her head on the ground. You cover your face, you cover your head, um, and Esme kind of like puts a hand on your back, just kind of keeping your head down as you hear just above you, just like <laughs> splintering in. Um, as you're all crawling, Auna has also hit the floor at this point. You, uh, just from listening, it sounds like a horrible magical battlefield above you is just broken out as this house has been turned into a war zone. Um, Esme kind of shouts a little bit and says, We have to get out of here. We need to either get upstairs and, and go through the roofs or, or, or figure something else out. Is there a way out? Down? Uh, Esme kind of looks a second. Says, I don't think there's a way out through the basement. And even then, we don't want to go into the sewers. They can find us easily there. Okay, then up. We should go up. Okay. I'm going to explain how this is going to work. This is not battle. You're not fighting yet. I have a clock here. Our favorite little mechanic. Um, I'm going to put... I'm going to say five notches on it. In fact, we'll have two clocks just to make things interesting. If you succeed five checks and you fill up that uh, the first clock, which will be called successfully escapes, then you won't have to fight anyone. And you'll be out of there. So you just have to do things. You're going to be the one initiating most of this. I might give you like a couple things to respond to here and there, but you're going to tell me what you want to do to help your chances of escape. And then every time you do something, 
I will fill in part of the clock. If it's really good, I'll fill in more parts of the clock. So, for instance, I'll fill in three instead of just one. But for every roll you fail, depending on how dangerous it was too, I will fill in another clock called the merriment catches up. If the merriment catches up, it's a fight. And you're going to have to deal with them before you can escape. So I'm going to fill in this clocks now. Um, but it's up to you to guide this kind of chase by telling me what you're doing, where you're leading people, um, or what you direct your friends to do as well. You can also tell them to do something because I know that they might have abilities that are outside of your purview. So you have complete control over what your side does. The rolls is not in your control. <laughs> cool. Okay. Above you. Spells are flying in from outside. Um, James is groaning, but he's still up. He's just, oh, that really hurts. Ugh. As uh, Elise has crawled her way over, he's like, it's okay. It's okay. We're going to get out of here. Does anybody have a shield? Um, um, let's see. Let's start from here. Um, who would be best to do this? Let's do, uh, you can, I'll give you a choice. Alana or Elise? Hmm. Elise. Elise. Elise sort of sits up saying, I got it. Um, and Elise never had to use a spell book. She was just magically gifted. Um, and you see her roll to apparate a barrier of protection. Uh, I'm going to roll to see how effective this is, but it is a pretty good move to get away. And that's a 17 on your first roll, which is success. So that is, uh, I would say, one tick on the success as you watch Elise kind of rise and pull up this kind of pastel energy that just a huge uh, translucent barrier just you see her pull up this barrier of pastel energy that just and then absorbing the shots of the merriment from outside as you are given some cover to get up the stairs. We need to hurry up and get upstairs and grab Fenlin and get out. Go, go, masks on, masks on now. As um, you see Esme sort of reach into her pouch and pull like a porcelain mask and put it over her face and you see the others do so as well. And now when it looks, you say, oh, I don't have a mask. I don't either. Uh, he, Alana pulls off his shirt and just ties it around his face. It's... Okay. Is there any, like, cloth around me? Does that, do I see anything, like, on the ground or, like, a fabric? Or do I, like, can I, like... It's easy enough. Alana tears his shirt and just, like, sorry, <laughs> as he hands oh. you it and just tells you to tie it around your face and just says, I do not envy you. <laughs> Chester, not now. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And kind of dives into like a, uh, a pocket in your armor. I will rush everyone ahead of me. Okay. Everyone goes clamoring up the stairs. Um, Granny is holding on to Fenlin. She's quite strong uh, as she's kind of holding on to him. Says, All right, I suppose they found us then? Unfortunately so. All right. And uh, she says, uh... Someone, who, whoever can, I, I can carry this person, but I am much more equipped if I am able to cast. And James says, I'm good, I'm good, I got him. Are you sure? Yeah, I, I don't really, we don't really have much other choice. He says, as he kind of, uh, like, loads Fenlin onto his back. You're now on the second um, story. Um, Esme kind of reaches up and pulls down a cord leading to, like, a, a staircase that just unfolds. Uh, it says, up, up. We can jump across the other roof. Wait, me first. Go. I'll go up because I want to perceive. <laughs> I would perceive. like to perceive, see what's going on. Make a perception check. 22. Okay. Perception check. You get up into this dusty attic. You can hear beneath the house rumbling and buckling as structural wood is starting to be destroyed by bolts of force that are just flying into the house itself. Um... You can see that there's no one in the attic right here above you waiting. It's pretty safe, but you have, I'll say, two options in terms of where you want to go. You can either jump out towards the front of the house and land in the street, which is kind of a loud way to go out, or you can try and leap across, or not in the street. You can go out the front 
and jump down from like the patio i would say that's probably smarter <laughs> um like a little overhang or from the side you can jump out that side and there's a fire escape that's a gap of distance between you and the next house but you'll be able to escape that way too which way would you like to go the quieter way quieter way okay both ways are can be quiet but i will interpret this as going through the fire escape which would not have you like kind of exposed for a while and Uh, running into the street so you make your way everyone gathers behind you as they are waiting you can start hearing footsteps down on the first floor of the house i'll Um, actually kind of skew people ahead of me and stay back sure you start scooting people ahead of you um, you tell them which direction to go, and they are left over at that gap. Um, there's a gap for them to jump. Some of them can do that with their abilities, but others of them are not able to, such as, for instance, James and Fenlon. Um, everyone else would be able to get across, but if you want one of them to help James and Fenlon get across, uh, uh, they might be able to. And okay. I'll give you another prompt in a second. As... I'll head out, like, behind them, Mm -hmm. and as we're up, I will try to make a vine to tie them and get them down. Very cool. Okay, so you're you're bringing them across to the other fire escape. Mm -hmm. Okay. With the vine, yeah, sure. Go ahead and give me an... This is Augment. This is Augment. You're trying to use magic you don't have yet, technically. So Uh Augment roll, DC of 15. 10. Okay. This is your first failure, but it's not that nothing happens. The vine goes outward and it just kind of across, um, but instead of a vine that's able to carry them all the way across, it just it creates kind of a, a, a bridge of vines that is sturdy enough for one trip. The problem is, is that it kind of latches on to the other fire escape and you hear like ting, 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 as it's getting kind of tense there and alerts the merriment to where you all are. This is your next problem. As you are sort of there and you can see James and Fenling getting across the vines, you see one of the merriment like uh, grunts kind of arrive up in the attic and look towards you ready to cast a spell to uh, either hurt you or hurt James and Fenlin. I will... It's extrapolated combat, so it's not going to be the same as, like, regular yeah. combat. I will shoot a hallucination arrow at him. Oh, okay. Very cool. Um, Go ahead. Uh, roll the hit. You have advantage if you use, like, steady aim. 14 plus 8. 14 plus 8. 22 will hit. Okay. The arrow sticks into the merriment. Uh, goon. I won't have you roll for damage for right now, but it does a chunk of... Good chunk of damage. But the main effect... I will go for now. You see, um, as he's kind of breaking the arrow off, you see him kind of raise his hand to, like, fire another spell. You see the energy starting to gather, and then you see sort of him start looking around at nothing as he kind of starts releasing bolts of energy into, like, different corners of the room. Uh, you That is a success, and a pretty good one at that. So bump that up again. As you all make your way across the vines, you, uh, James and uh, Fenlin, get across as the others are waiting for you on the other fire escape that goes up to a more like apartment style building, so a lot higher up. Um, and as you are on the vines, um, you feel it start to give as the, you hear like, um, and you are running, running, and just barely make it to the other side as the vines collapse there. Um, you make your way up, just dunk, dunk, dunk. Uh, next choice. You can either go up on the roofs or you could try and go through someone's apartment. <laughs> Pros for a roof is it's a lot faster. You can just kind of run. There's some jumping that's going to be involved, but that's, you know, for anything, really. Apartment, there's a lot more pathways and places to hide and possibly, you know, get out. But it's a lot slower and you don't know who's in there and what's going to happen. So it's a kind of a wild card route. We're going to go through the apartment. Oh, sweet. You... But you know, we're going to... Lidoro's going to come up to everyone and just, like, gently try to open the window. Be like, everyone, 
we're going to try and make our way through. Okay. Uh, first, uh, this is not going to count towards your failures, or actually, it might, but do a lock picking check for me. So, this is Ooh. sleight of hand. Okay. Or, yeah, that's the easiest for now. So, sleight of hand. You actually might be proficient in this. So, um, we'll just see. If you roll really high, then I'll give you some extra points towards this. 23. Okay. You're able to quickly get the lock open and in. Uh, explain parts of the plan as you're starting to see the merriman. They're trying to hold down the one member that is like firing rapidly. You see him like blast one of the other ones like in the chest as they come up the stairs as you've bought them quite a bit of time to at least get in here. But as you are entering silently into the apartment, you do see one of them pointing towards the building that you're in. Um, You all enter into this apartment. I'm going to roll a luck check really quickly. Actually, go ahead and roll me a D100. Uh, luck check to see if there's anyone in this apartment. Uh, it's 50-50 right now. Actually, it's really early, so there's a pretty good chance. 68. There's someone in this apartment. Okay, As cool. you kind of make your way through, you're all sneaking in, and then you, at 9.30 in the morning, you, like, pass by the kitchen, and there's just, like, a, a woman with, like, a bowl of cereal there who's like, ah! <laughs> it just drops, like, shatters on the ground. We all, like, I'm like, everyone, go, go, go. <laughs> they start rushing I'll, through. But I'll stay back and be like, I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> um, please enjoy your day and your breakfast. We mean no harm. <laughs> As you all rush through, comforting this woman. <laughs> um, in the apartment, you have two options. You can go towards the stairwell, which would give you access to the roof and the ground again. Or, you can try and make your way through to the other side of this person's apartment and get to the other end where I'll say that they have a unit that has access so they can see like another building. So you just be leaping through to the next building basically. I would say head toward the stairs down to the street to try and blend in. Cool. You head down. You make your way out of the apartment. First of all, give me a stealth check really quickly as you're leaving the apartment. Twenty. Twenty. Sure. Oh, sorry, I did the math. Because it was a nine. It's a higher. It's a. It is it gets, a higher DC. But yeah, it gets it's, ten. It's twelve. It's plus twelve. So it's plus twelve. So it's twenty. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. Um, you push out. You are ushering people through as they're running through the apartment down these stairs. Uh, you, on your last check, as you turn, you hear just like, and you hear that same woman just go ah, before you hear like. You hear, like, just this scream cut short um, and footsteps marching towards the door where you are as you quickly are able to close the door and make your way down the stairs. But as a success, you're not fully out of the woods yet, but you're able to rush down through the stairwell, pushing past people who are like, whoa, watch it, as they're all going out. You push through the lobby of this uh, building, eventually out into the street. Um, You jump and blend into the crowd as best as you can. Go ahead and give me... Oh, yeah. Are you doing anything else? Um, I'd probably, as we're going down, see if there are any, like, carts of, like, people selling things or anything like that to try and grab, like, a cloak here or, like, something there to, like, kind of throw on people to, like... This is a luck check. I don't want to do D100 for this one. Why don't we just do a straight D20 check? See how lucky you are. So it's just straight (laughs) D20. Oh, cool. I'm not that bad. I'm going to use this different dice just because I'm feeling crazy. That was crazy and stupid. That's a five. <laughs> crazy and stupid. Here's what happens. You can't find any carts of merchants because you're stor- sort of still in a residential district, but there are groups of people that are like waking up, going out. The streets are starting to get filled with people that are going to their jobs. You're able to snatch a cloak off of somebody if you would like to start doing that. It'll cause a little bit of commotion, but it might... it's going to cause too much, she probably would hold off. If she could sneakily grab something, but if if, if she feels like if it's going to be too much, probably just leave it. Okay. So now I need a stealth check. Um... That is a group stealth check. How am I going to do this? What I want you to do is, without reliable talent, just roll stealth. This is this is without reliable talent because it counts for everyone. I'll have you roll it three times. Best two out of three, oh. we'll say. Okay. You have to beat 20. 
feel me the same when all of them are. Who's the first one? It's a one. So, a one Maybe I is a have. failure. <laughs> and that oh, no. adds two notches to the clock of the merriment. <laughs> so you're three to three right now. Okay. As, here's what happens. Oh, no. Your friends in their hurried state and their desire to cover their face are still wearing merriment masks. And the merriment, from what you've heard, is kind of a big deal here. And so, as you're kind of trying to join the crowd, there are people that look up and see merriment members in their masks and just kind of gasp and, and scream as they kind of fall away. And kind of the, the sea kind of parts in front of you as the crowd starts no, to no, realize no. And, and go into a panic at the fact that there are members of this highly respected criminal organization yeah, walking amongst them. Okay. Um, as you see kind of um, apparating just <laughs> in the street behind you, merriment members are starting to push through the crowds as well um, in their masks, which is starting to become a problem as now you are navigating a tumultuous crowd while they are also pushing through to try and get to you. They're not going to start mowing people down, but, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so, as you are making your way through the crowds, if you keep going as you are going now, they're going to catch you. Yeah. So, uh, what would you like to do to try and break their line of sight? You could also ask for other NPCs yeah. to try and do stuff. Can anyone cause a distraction? Um... Auna looks over at, at James and says, is that fire just for show? And uh, James is like, hell no, it's not. And as he says, he kind of turns around. He says, make smoke. And James looks and says, I could try. Um, I'm going to roll for both of them. This is a big ask. But Auna starts to kind of swing his staff and whip up a windstorm in this little area. And James is going to try to produce as much smoke as he can oh in this moment. Auna rolls 17, plus his uh, stats for wind, which I believe are... Yeah, that's good enough. James. James rolls just enough to get some smoke. Ooh, as okay, cool. Auna turns and that's the wind hot. starts to pick up around you, and James quickly... Uh, you see his uh, like arms ignite as he just kind of add smoke to this area and a, a whirlwind of smoke and you're coughing from all around you as the merrymen are getting caught up in this uh, storm but they have you broke in line of sight that's a, one more success for you you have one more until you escape what Is are you doing there either like an abandoned type shop anywhere or an alleyway um Let's do a luck roll for the abandoned shop. Okay. This isn't going to count towards your success or failure, but there definitely are alleyways. Six. There are alleyways. Okay. Most of these houses are residential. Oh, okay, dokie. Okay, so when the smoke goes, I'll usher everyone into the closest alleyway. Okay, this is another group stealth check. Best two out of three. If your first one's a one, then that's tough. What'd you get? A one. I'm gonna literally... <laughs> As the distraction rises into the air and you begin to <laughs> usher people down the alleyway, you see, you feel the heat of eyes on you as one of them <laughs> apparates in front of you as a natural one brings them to five. Cool. You are now in a fight. Go ahead and roll initiative awesome. for me. Great. <laughs> so, this is going to be a quick fight. We're not going to drag it out the entire time, and at any point you can try to escape and keep running, and we're going to play out that scene. But here's how it's going to go. It's going to be the ally round, the enemy round, and your round. On the ally round, you can ask for help from anyone that's with you. So that's Granny, Elise, Esme, James, or Auna, or Jester as well. <laughs> or Chester. Chester. Um, and the enemy round is going to be this person who's fighting you, trying to stop you and harm you in whatever way possible. Depending on how you do in this fight is how the whole group does in this fight. Um, currently, just because the others are still caught up in that windstorm, there is one that has caught you. But you can see his mask is different from everyone else's masks. 
The others are like this white porcelain. This person is wearing this like deep violet porcelain mask with these almost strange and elegant engravings on them, like gold and such. And these eyes that are covered, you can't even see them. They just look ominously down at you um, as he extends out. Uh, What'd you roll? 21. 21. Okay. Ally round is first, technically, but you can take your turn if you'd like, since you went before the enemies. She's probably going to... Like, the minute that there's someone in front of her, Mm. and she senses that they're different, she would kind of pause and be like, huh, you look a little different. They just kind of cock their head silently. And then... How close are they to her? Really? Like, right in front of you. They're like, they're like, well, I... Like, with an arm's reach. Yeah, yeah, right in front of you. They're right in front of you, basically. She whips out her claws (laughs) and takes a giant swing at their throat. Go ahead and roll an attack roll for me. That's your spell attack. Currently, it will just be the regular damage um, because they are not surprised and they have... Uh, no one near them on your side currently, because the others are down the alleyway. 19. 19. 19 does hit. Go for it. 17 plus 9. 17 plus 9. 26 points of damage as Ladara, you reel back. Sharp claws with this green energy. You rear back and slice across the chest and towards the throat you see they lean back just in time to miss their jugular getting just sliced by these claws and you see blood just you just hear them uh, that is your turn 26 you have a bonus action in your movement too uh, you have your cunning action remember so you can dash disengage etc using your cunning action uh, as a bonus action basically it's just them in this alley, right? And there's no one so else. So far, yeah. So, so far. far, it's just one person there who's just, like, on your tail, basically. I'll try to move around them, basically, but not try to get too far, because I want to take them out. Okay, sure. You uh, are able to move around them. Uh, if you leave their range, they'll get a swing on you. Um, I won't get too far. Okay. Just enough to, like, move and get... Okay. You'll get right, yeah. You'll get right behind them. So basically, they cut off your your space there. You're able to slice them as they're in front of you. Get around them um, as people are still rushing down. That brings it to their turn. They turn towards you. Go ahead and give me a wisdom saving throw if you would. Fifteen. Fifteen is not gonna do it. Oh, great. You see for a second the mask just turn towards you and then you see this just like feel this energy just pastel energy start pouring into your mind as you feel yourself losing control of your body but there are allies with you. Esme is uh, no Esme won't be able to do this. Elise is going to turn around and cast Counterspell. The problem is that Elise can't cast Counterspell at a high enough level, so I have to roll for it, but I would like you to roll for it for me. (laughs) So roll me a d20 and add 5. You need to beat 15, or else Ladara will be under effects of Dominate Person. (laughs) Ooh. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) My bad. (laughs) Oh, Oh, no, that's bad. (laughs) That is bad. That is very bad. Yeah, this is bad. This is not good. Natural 20. Natural 20! Oh my god. Yeah. You are... The scene is this. Ladara, you are faced off against this member of the Merriment who just turns towards you and with a symbol, you can see that from the cracks in their mask, there's just this pastel energy that is flowing outward and then just attaching itself to you, threatening to enter your very mind as... Elise turns around and says, leave her alone! And swings out another bout of pastel energy that uh, flies out, like this pinkish energy that just breaks that stream, flies up the walls, and it crashes through, breaking the connection to the spell. You are not dominated. You are safe and good to go. Uh, That would have been extremely bad. Um, 
no bonus action on their part so that is their turn they're just going to get up in your face again that brings us to the ally round so anyone that you want to act to try and help you here Esme what you got Esme turns around sees that you are in trouble and you see her uh, pull a move that you taught her as she pulls a dagger and just whips it around we're gonna see if it hits that's just enough to hit as a dagger sinks into the merriment's uh into the merriment's tunic you see blood just start to pour um esme does get sneak attack uh go ahead and roll that damage for me so it's 1d4 plus 46 and then i'll add the last number which is like four 1d4 plus 46 if you do enough damage, you'll be able to break the concentration enough to make another check to escape, basically. Oh, that's a lot of red. <laughs> 16. 16 points of damage. Let's see if that gets you beneath. Oh, 16 plus 4, which brings this person below half, which is just enough to make another escape check. Uh, this is going to be a acrobatic check for you Ooh, okay. to get out of here. See if you can break away from this person. 19. 19. I'm going to roll a money strike. That is not going to do it. Uh, you see as this is broken, you hear like a sing, sing, sing as a dagger whizzes past your ear. You see a little bit of hair just like get cut as it sinks into the merriment member and you hear them go, Ugh, uh, um, breaking their concentration just enough for you to push them and start running away. Uh, we're going to do a much faster escape round now. There's no clocks to this. It is just a roll off at this point. Okay. You are running down this alleyway. You're about to break eyesight and join another crowd further down. This is another stealth check. Um, the first... Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, you've, it's two out of three. Best two out of three. It was a six, a six, and a seventeen. Six to six and a seventeen plus your stealth. What is, is that? Plus twelve, so eighteen, eighteen, twenty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm gonna roll to see if they beat a <laughs> each of those. Nope, got close. And then twenty-nine is impossible to beat. You see on the other side of the alleyway that there are much more people and more importantly, a road full of Salankari that are making their way. Um, and as fortune would have it, you make your way onto the other end as a large double decker Salankari with like a, a trolley is making their way. You see Granny sort of hop on and then just start waving you to join on the backs of this thing. We're on. You all hop on. You see that people are just hopping on as well to get to work as this Salankari moves at a pretty decent speed through the larger streets. Um, you are all kind of sat down and keep low as you see off in the distance that merriment member sort of looking around lock eyes with you but not give chase as you see they are bleeding down the side and they just kind of pull the dagger out um, and let it clatter to the ground but you escaped as you all ride this Salankari bus through the city you all have a moment of reprieve as you're all sat there, at this point, they remove their masks. So they have removed their masks in the alleyway to not cause any more commotion. And you all sit. James, are you all right? James, who kind of sits Fenlon down in a seat and starts to kind of pad his forehead um, with a cloth, says, I'm fine. Don't don't worry about me. I'm good. I'm always good. It's a pretty good move there, uh, Anna. And Anna looks and says, Not so bad yourself. Glad you were reliable. He says, okay. Well, that's kind of a compliment. He's trying his best. So what was that about? It's... Esme speaks up. It's very mend. I don't know how they found us. I, I... I wish I knew what they knew. If they know our identities, then... Um, and Granny kind of cuts in and says, I, I don't think you have to worry about that. If they knew your identities, you'd already be dead. And, uh, your families as well. 
And so, uh, it was a good call to keep those masks on, at least. For the meantime, and, um, Elise kind of looks at you and says, Um, are you okay? They were trying to cast some kind of magic on you. Yes, I'm alright, thank you. No worries. Of course, we're friends. <laughs> yeah. That last one there, they were different. Their mask was different. What did that mean? James, who's still focused on making sure Fenlon's all right, who is kind of still sweating and weakly breathing, kind of speaks up and says, they were a Walker. It's um, a rank you can attain in the merriment. And that's pretty big, you know? So, kind of... Uh, Impressive that you were able to stand toe-to-toe with one. Does anyone here ha- have a way to contact people? Um, at least kind of, uh, perks up and is like, ah, uh, I can, in a way, yes. Depends on if they're nearby or far, but I can okay, do something. well, that's the difficult part. I just, all of my friends are out for the day, and I don't really know where they are, but I feel like... I should at least tell them what's happening, or at least if they have a place, maybe we can go there, but I don't know what's going on, honestly. I'll let me try and and reach someone. I don't, if I don't know them, I need a description. Oh. Well, I don't know. You see, I don't know. You, you know what he looks like, right? Yeah. I'm looking at him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Um, imagine... Imagine his hair is a little longer. Okay. A little... Mm, more... I don't know. A flair to, to him? A little... Quirkier? Um, she raises her hand and she does a quick symbol. And you see a small illusion pop up as... When his hair grows. Oh, shoot. Uh, it's purely an image. It's how I was like, what? what is this? What's going on? Oh. Wow, you really are identical. Wow. I don't like it. <laughs> says as he's kind of <laughs> swatting at his hair. <laughs> okay. Let me try. And not to him. Okay, focus. Focus. Azram. Think of uh, Azram as the name? Azram. Okay. I need to roll a D100. <laughs> okay. Um, here. Um, actually, could you roll that for me? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you need below a certain amount because there's some rules in play. Yeah. 46. Um, I can feel a connection, but it's not strong. I don't think I can reach him right now. <sighs> Which I'll interpret to you as currently something that you know. Azram is in the Witchwood Market, which has different rules than if he was in Lunastra right now. So, you know, if Azram were to leave the Witchwood Market at any point, that connection would be strong. I will have uh, Elise check in at every hour, basically. Okay. And when she gets a connection, she will tell you. Okay. Okay. Sorry. That's, uh, it's all right. Thank you for trying. No problem. As long as we can get somewhere safe for now, and we can figure this out um alright a safe place alright the merriment has orders to not be around the temple district so it's a place we could try and find somewhere to rest and at least until they Catch our scent again. Okay. Sounds good. How did they know we were there? Um, as as May is just kind of thinking to herself, she pulls like a little necklace. Does this even work? Um, what is that? It's a necklace that we had made in the Witchwood Market to, to prevent scrying. It's supposed to protect us, but I don't... At this point, I don't know. Someone must have tipped them off, but who? 
the bus makes its way down the streets as you ride the uh, snagway throughout Lunastra in its circular fashion until you reach the temple district. And that's where we will take a break. Hey there, softies. It's Christian with The Break. Thank you for joining us for episode 46 of Soft Pod. I really hope you're enjoying it. There's a lot of wild time stuff going on right now, and so trying to connect things has been a little difficult in a completely improv show, but it's all kind of working out somewhere, so I'm really excited about it. In my eyes, we are approaching what I would call like Act 1 of Lunastra or so, if I could really call it that. Something along those lines. The setup part of Lunastra, basically. And so I'm really excited for what comes next, which is the players taking agency and exploring the city and acting on the information that they figured out. Now, on to a word from our sponsors, starting with Dungeon Depths. If you don't already know... Dungeon Depths is your one-stop shop for quality gaming supplies with character. That's dice, dice vaults, apparel, stickers. There's quite a large selection over there, so you can go check that out and peruse their wares at shopdungeondepths.com. We also were running a giveaway with Dungeon Depths this entire week, so you can check our social media right now to see if you are the lucky winner of a custom pair of advantage-disadvantage dice from Dungeon Depths. If you didn't win, no worries, we will be having more amazing Dungeon Depths giveaways going forward, but for now, just go check them out at shopdungeondepths.com, and don't forget to use the code SOFTPOD, S-O-F-P-O-D, for 10% off at checkout. Thank you, Dungeon Depths. Do you like tabletops? What about virtual tabletops? Tabletops that are stored on the internet. Well, Roll20's got you covered, and they are also sponsoring the show as we are part of the Roll20 Spotlight. Um, They actually sent me a code for the new D&D sourcebook, or one of the newer ones, for Strixhaven. So I was very, very thankful for that. Right now, you can go check it out at Roll20.net. It is a wonderful software that you can use to run your games from anywhere in the world and to use for battle maps and to use for storing tokens. There is a lot of functionality there, so go check them out at Roll20.net. This show is also sponsored by you, the viewer, on Patreon. Right now, I want to take a moment to thank some of our $10 honorary bard patrons. Thank you, too. Isela, Carrie, Patty, Annie, Eli, Allie, Bella, Orpheus, and Pepper. Thank you for being a subscriber on Patreon. One other thing I wanted to announce is that in two weeks or so will be the anniversary of SoftPod. That's right, a year ago on the 24th, I believe it is, will be one year since we posted our first episode and one year since we really started this whole thing. Um, There's going to be fun stuff we want to try to do on that week leading up to the anniversary. Uh, So keep an eye on the social media, keep an eye on the Discord. In fact, if you're not already a part of the Discord, the Strings of Fig Community Discord is a great place to get updates about the show, to go see content, to go meet other people who love the show, and to discuss the show, as well as to just talk and about all the other fun things that people love to talk about. We do watch-alongs, we do... Uh, other cool community events that our wonderful uh, guild staff run. It is fantastic. So go ahead and join the soft cord. Back to my original point. There will be updates in the soft cord as we get things planned. So keep an eye out on the announcement channel for all of that. If you're listening on any podcast service, go ahead and give us a rating if you can. A uh, five-star rating preferably. It really helps us to uh, get pushed up in the algorithm so that people can see our content. If you're watching on YouTube, then don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to comment down below. Um, My comment prompt for today is, who's your favorite NPC and why? Um, I have a lot of NPCs I'm introduced in Lunastra, and they're all getting a little wacky and wild. But I kind of want to know who your favorite NPC is and, you know, what do you like about them? 
I've already seen some amazing Geronimo Johnson fan art, which I was not expecting at all. And th- thus, I am I am blown away by the community's uh, attachment to some of these NPCs. They are wild in my head, but uh, everyone seems to really like them, and that is enough for me. Anyways, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the episode. Bye! The entire chase in terms of getting away and then the initial chase, I'm going to extrapolate out to like 30 minutes. You know, we we cut down some of those scenes of running and rushing. It's like 30 minutes. So, and then the actual ride itself, this bus ride throughout the city, it stops at every stop and thus takes you around like an hour to get to the temple district. Um... Elise is still trying uh, every 30 minutes to kind of get through to this person that you told her to, but she's not getting anything, any connection there. But as you make your way through, you eventually reach this area. The bus comes to a stop. You can see this, this basically this very nice district, very nicely curated, a lot of wide open spaces and parks and statues and topiaries, and then like beautiful temple buildings with large columns and beautifully designed exteriors. Um, there's a lot of people who look like tourists and such that are also here uh, that are just exploring and looking around this early, um, which as a note, even though it's early, it doesn't look early. It still looks like it's like sunset, but you all arrive. Um, Esme pulls from the pouch uh, a number of silver coins and says, I'm paying the fare for all of us, and then just leaves it off um, with the attendant, the driver. You all take a step off. Esme says, how many centuries did you count? Um, and... James said, more than I could keep track of, but none of them are coming after us. And Granny sort of looks and says, Oh, so my theory's correct. The entire merriment doesn't know that you're who you are. It doesn't know your identities. It was a shot in the dark by one Feywalker. Why would they be going after you? My immediate theory is that somebody... Maybe that Fay Walker caught wind of our activities, that we're getting cold feet, as to say, and looking into, and sort of points at Granny, other options. Let's discuss this somewhere private, privater than this. Um, uh, I'll let you choose. What, what kind of place do you want to try to find? You would know most about, like, secluded rendezvous areas. You said there were parks? There were parks, yeah. Are there any, like, secluded, like, gazebo-type things? Or yeah. things just kind of, like, off in, like, the... Absolutely. Okay. There would be, like, these nice gazebos that are all built. Some of them are, like, these nice marble gazebos in the middle of intricate flower gardens that all grow in the moonlight and then kind of sparkle a little bit. They are secluded enough in some places. There's just so many of them that, you know, they're not huge tourist attractions. But you're able to find one that is devoid of tourists around this time of day and able to take a seat in this gazebo. You can hear, like, there's, like, a little fountain that is spraying into some water. A very far cry from the sounds of exploding wood and the house being torn apart by magic. As you all sit down in a park uh, closer kind of to like the center of Lunastra. Um, Esme kind of sits, everyone takes a load off. Um, James leaves a whole bench open to lie down Fenlin and kind of keep, um, the sweat from forming by like patting his head. He like wets the cloth in some of the fountain water, like dabs his forehead. You have time to talk and to figure out your next step. 
as Granny looks at this. Hurry in. I'm guessing our training's gonna have to be on hold for a while. I feel awake we could do some multitasking. You'd had a pretty good move there of creating that vine bridge for your friend. Oh, thank you. So, to help Fenlin, what do we need to do? I. Well, Fenlin's treatment is going to take quite some time. I'm going to need to get him back to the shop at some point. Give him some place without so much action so that he can rest properly. And then I'm going to need to pay a visit to some old friends so I can find the right ingredients to um, to deal with this. Therein lies the problem, of course. I'm not allowed where I'm supposed to go. You mentioned the name before, last year, the Witchwood Market. I need to get supplies from down there. No access. At least that's uh, the stipulations of the agreement I have with the Merriment. I'm not allowed to interfere with them. They're not allowed to interfere with me. But, uh, as you can see, things are getting a bit loose now. All right, so then, if you tell me what you need, can I go and get it? Will I be able to enter? If you can find it, yeah. You should be able to, as long as you don't draw attention. Um, Esme kind of looks and says, No, Ladara. If they don't know my identity, I will go and get the components needed. You... You've already had a scrape once with the merriment. I'm not letting it get that close again, right? You're not, not going into afraid the... of them. I know it's not a matter of being afraid. In fact, that's part of the problem: is you're not afraid of them. All right, you should be. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry. I and um. Granny kind of, in the silence, kind of looks and says, Now, before, however, I agree to this treatment and everything, I get the feeling that it's not the only reason that you chose me to reach out to. Could have easily tried to find another healer outside of the city or requested... I don't know done research into trying to find someone else there are plenty of good healers that could keep him alive might be able to do the same things I can do in fact so why me yeah, Esme kind of just grits her teeth and James is the first to break the silence by saying we heard you got out of the merriment Granny looks at you and says, <sighs> First lesson, I suppose. Everyone comes to you when they want something. <laughs> it's never as easy and simple as uh, it seems on the surface. How did you get out? Not easily. If you're thinking that I concocted some potion or cast some magic that made them forget about me or had them in the grip of my hand to the point that they could I don't know acquiesce it's not the case so you're all trying to get out of the merriment then it's not that simple if you want out of the merriment you've got to go all the way to the top I made a deal. I took on an impossible task. I played the ferryman's twisted game and I won. If you can do that, you should be fine. You can't just find a way out and leave. You can't just... <sighs> if you simply run, they're going to hunt you down to the ends of Afra. Save for if you leave and head into the northern marches, where you'll be thrown about by whatever beast or 
horrible creatures lie up there, and then all that leaves then is any loved ones you've got here. What is their goal? What is, what is the purpose of this merriment? <sighs> to advertise this a way for people to gain power to be a part of something to take power away from the official channels and to fight back it's not that it's an excuse for whoever holds the title of ferryman to live above everyone else and to share those riches with the people that they love and to demonstrate that power for the people that spite them. I don't know who the ferryman is now, but I know that every person that approaches that throne, they gain that same sick desire for entertainment and if you appease that that's about your best chance of getting out the others the riders of fate they they sort of sink into their hands in dejection at this they're just kind of james is just kind of walking off it's just <sighs> and what about the the local government Besides the merriment, there has to be other powers here that can Ooh. help. Well, there or... certainly are. There are representatives from each of the nations, and then, I mean, there are, of course, the lords that help to run the city. Council of them. That... So they would be like the heads of Lunastra overall. Aye, Lunastra tries to boast itself to be a place without corruption and without centralized power that caters to the needs of its people. But you're going to have a hard time finding a lord that isn't in the Merriman's pockets. Of course. So, with the moon shards... Aye? How does that tie into the Merriman don't know, honestly. I got out a long time ago, and I'd never heard tell of any merriment being able to infiltrate the Temple of the Fractured Mother. It was strictly off-limits, and it was one thing that the Lunar Quartet, they wouldn't acquiesce on. Things must have changed in recent years. So now are they just going to keep coming after my friends until they're dead? If one Feywalker already has a suspicion that there is a rat inside of the merriment, I'd say if you keep acting as you are now and you don't bow your heads and just accept your roles, I, they'll eventually find out. They'll hunt you down. Then why'd he let us get away? I saw it in their eyes. Whoever was under that mask decided to stop. Who knows? Maybe they find it a game as well. And that's the fun thing about the merriment, is the people that tend to rise in the ranks are the same people that have the same sadistic sense of humor as the ferryman. It's absolutely disgusting. So... What's it going to be? And you watch the Riders of Fate just dejected, all sunk in their seats. We're not... There's no way out. We either play an impossible game and die, or we try and escape and die, or we continue doing what we've been doing. There has to be a way. There has to be something else that we can do. There has to be something... 
somewhere you can go. Is there anyone else who has gotten out before? <sighs> Granny shakes her head. If there are, I don't know them. But I'll see this. I'd rather die trying to escape than live under that tyrant. I made that choice a long time ago and it made it a lot easier for me because in reality I was doing it to protect someone else. Someone else? Hmm. I... You all seem like good folk. Kids. I don't want to send you down an impossible road, but if you want a way out, you're going to have to fight for it somehow. Okay. Okay, he stops and then goes back to examining Fenlin to kind of help. She starts giving him like tinctures of things to kind of calm his breathing and coughing. And you are left in this park under the twilight sky. As you all think on the weight of what you've been told. Esme is lost in thought. She kind of just stands up and then makes her way over to like the edge of the garden and just sits in the grass and kind of looks on. As the hills. I'll go and sit next to her. Cautiously. And a little... Putting a little distance between... <sighs> you sit with Esme. She doesn't look up as you sit down, keeping your distance in this grass. The wind just kind of blows through. And in this part of the city, things are quiet. Both look on at the twilight sky as Esme finally breaks the silence with a deep sigh. I don't know what to do, Adara. Are you okay? No, honestly. <sighs> we signed our lives away. Now the only way out is to throw everyone through some sick game. I wish I had an answer for you, but... also don't know what to do. <sighs> I just want you guys to be safe. I want you guys to be able to get out. I don't want to leave the city knowing I left my friends a horrible life. I think my only option is to fight, then. To face them head on, like Granny said. I'm scared. You're also strong. You can hold your own. And you could before, but you're even stronger now. I know it's overwhelming, 
But we can figure it out. We can... There has to be a loophole or a solution or maybe... I have a friend who used to live here. He might know... He might know a way or someone who can help. just kind of hangs for a second to you and says thank you I didn't want to get you involved but it looks like it's too late for that I was involved the minute I knew it was James under that mask you have friends here that can help I do I do I'm traveling with a couple people a lot of people, actually, there's a lot of us now. <sighs> They're really smart. And... Well, some of them are. <laughs> but they're, they're great. And I'd love for you guys to be able to meet them. Hopefully. If you would like, but... Maybe they would know something and we can try and get an answer. Then I'll rely on you all for a little bit longer. She says, but I have to be a leader now. Esme just kind of stays in silence with you, looking on at the vista of the temple district of Lunastra looking on towards the center where you can see from this angle through these enormous stained glass windows the outline of the fractured mother shining outward onto the city I'll silently get up and I'll leave her alone for a moment Elise kind of pulls you aside. Elise, is there any... any luck in my uh, friend? Let me roll. I'm actually going to also check time-wise how long it's been. Probably it took you 30 minutes to find this area. Talking and waiting. I roll. I'm going to roll just a luck check. Got something. Really? Yes, I have a connection to someone. Um, okay. I'll start sending the message. Once you tell me what to say, please. Okay, okay, okay. I'm a little nervous. Um, this message is from Ladara. We are in the temple district. Can we meet up? Okay. Okay, so you send this message and he says um, all of this it goes through at least he's kind of nodding okay, alright okay, um, good news whoever this is, they're also nearby thank god they're in the main temple right now, if we Head over there. We might be able to meet up with them. They they, they were kind of non-committal about it. No. So it's a maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sounds like him. Okay. All right. The, the the main temple. We can we can do that. We can go there. We can. Hopefully, I'll kind of pull Alna aside for a moment. Sure. I'm so sorry that hmm? this is the way that this day has turned. Oh. I. It's... it's all right. We got a little time to pretend like things weren't, you know? It was so nice. Hey. This is nice, too. I don't know what to do. I really don't. 
I, I, I feel like I usually have something, a solution, a, a, a path, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Eona kind of leans on his staff and looks at you. Says, Is he still shirtless? Yeah, he's still shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of, hmm, do you want my advice? Please. I I'm familiar with people like the ferryman or I should say a person like the ferryman a tyrant that cares only for their own whims and needs and uplifts those that please them and harms those that don't. I wish that I had fought a lot earlier. I wish that I had had the chance to meet you and our friends a lot sooner in my life. You all are the first people that have made me feel like I can win that fight. And so, it's okay if right now you don't have the right answer. But I want to reassure you that you are strong enough for them on your own if they do take that path and fight back I think we've got a shot I want to help them then let's do it together okay let's Shall we meet my brother at the temple? Maybe we should. Okay. Esme and you all gather with this information. James puts Fenlin on his back. As you all walk towards the temple of the fractured mother where inside your friends are facing their own trial. Mm. That's where we'll end.